what's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics and people like DC Comics, people like dinosaurs, smash them together and we've got the topic of today's video which is the Jurassic League. And the Jurassic League is written by Juan Gideon and Daniel Warren Johnson with art by Juan Gideon and Rafa Garris, colors by Mike Spicer and letters by Farron Delgado. And if you followed my channel before, you know that I actually reviewed the very first issue of this book. So if you want like a more in-depth on the story itself, where I kind of go through page by page, be sure to check out that video right up here. As for this particular video, I will be going over the story, but in a more broad aspect. There will be some spoilers along the way, but I'd say not enough to deter you from reading the book itself, should you like what I have to say about it. So as the title suggests, this is an Elseworlds type of story that looks at the Justice League if it had existed in the prehistoric era and if the members of the Justice League had been humanized personification of dinosaurs. And this book starts with our Superman stand in as he's rocketing towards Earth from his dying planet and he's found by some of the local wilderness people. They take him, they raise him, you know the story. But effectively, supervillain dinosaurs are going around the area, they're kidnapping humans in order to feed them to the dark embryo. And much like our main Jurassic League members, all of these villains are also counterparts to other DC villains. They include Giganta, Bronazaro, Atrocitorus, Black Manosaurus, and Jokerzerd. And when Bronazaro and Giganta break into Metropolis, a community that Supersaur helped created uh, for the humans, they effectively take all the humans, prompting Supersaur to jump into action because he's got to find his people. He's got to find his mom and dad. And along the way, he encounters Batsaur, Wander Dawn, Aquanix, Flash Raptor, and Green Torch. But as far as the overall story goes, Supersaur, Batsaur, and Wander Dawn get the bulk of the character development here. Like when it comes to Supersaur, we see his origin. We see him rocketing towards the earth and being founded by his adopted parents. And so over the course of the story, it's him being invested in finding them and then kind of, you know, coming to terms of why he was sent to Earth in the first place. Because he sort of goes from a mindset of, I need to protect just this one community to I need to protect everybody. And then there's Batsaur, who also has a very similar origin story to obviously Batman. He had dinosaur mom, dinosaur dad, and they were murdered in front of him when he was a child. So he grew up and turned himself into this huge giant dinosaur weapon that knows martial arts and also dresses like a bat and his sole purpose and goal is to find the one that is responsible for that which leads him to cross paths with not only jorkerzerd but also a tiny little human whose parents also died so we also not only have batman but we have a soon to be robin and he goes from a place of wanting to be alone to just hunt jorkerzerd and you know avenge his parents to kind of understanding the importance of friendship and teamwork. And like I said, the other big story in this one is Wonder Dawn, who comes from the island of Trimascira. And it's just an island of Triceratops, and she's having visions of, you know, others like her forming a team to stop a great evil. And her mom's like, yes, you need to go to the mainland. You need to answer these visions. You can do it you're strong and uh points for her flying an invisible pterodactyl that was just that was great so now we have all of our players on the board and some battles happen with the book culminating in the dark embryos hatching who does he hatch into dark leo side yeah an ankylosaurus dark side and much like his counterpart dark side he is one bad dino and it effectively takes the combined efforts of the entire Jurassic League in order to stop him. And it's only by a small margin that this even happens. And then this book ends with the prospect that more stories could unfold from this universe. I personally would like to see that because again, we didn't really get much on Flash, Raptor, Green Torch, or Aquanix. So it would be cool to see, you know, how their origins are similar yet different from their, you know, DC counterparts proper, as well as getting to see places like this world version of Atlantis or Oa. And I think I do see a potential Flash story here. Wally West is running, something happens and glitches out in the Speed Force, and he ends up in this world and meets 
his Flash counterpart. And it's just fun going through and looking at like all of the, you know, small minute changes to, you know, the way you pronounce certain cities, like instead of Gotham City, it's Gralfham City instead of Metropolis. I think it would be pronounced Metropolis. <laughs> and One Gideon does do the bulk of the artwork, except for the, I want to say the halfway point, which would be maybe the fourth issue of the story where Rafa Garris takes over. And so you have this really big difference in the artwork, which makes that temporary switch just a little bit jarring. And overall, I really enjoyed this story. It's one of those type of comics that reminds me that comics can just be plain fun. This is one of those types of books that I also feel like would make a very fun animated movie. So if you had never read or tried the Jurassic League singles, I do recommend picking up the hardback. This is a very fun story, and I think most people who read it are going to have a very good time. And with that, I'm going to score the Jurassic League an 8.5 out of 10. So the Jurassic League, what did you think about this story? If you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. All right, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.